85-69. Were you worried? I wasn't too worried. Um, Illinois uses a big second half to just overpower the more. Oh, you want? Let me bring Austin on right now. Austin, how are you, sir? I L L I and I, baby. Were you worried at all? Um. There was a tinge of worry, but just knowing how Illinois performed in the Big Ten tournament, I was going to wait until at least like seven minutes left in the second half to get the panic meter up. And I know I'm Mr. Panic on Twitter, but I didn't <laughs> feel really any panic. I just knew that Terrence Shannon wasn't going to let a school like Moorhead State beat him. And it's just Illinois needed to do the little things, turn it up a notch uh, in terms of cleaning up things in, in the passing game getting some offensive rebounds, heading to the free throw line a little bit more. And um, some guys stepped up like Dre Gibbs LaHorn and Dane Danger and Luke Goody. Luke Goody. Uh, yeah. Yes. Those three stepped it up. And then Marcus Damask just quietly having the 10th uh, d- triple-double in NCAA tournament history, joining John Morant. Uh, um, and who else is there? Draymond Green is in there. Cole Aldrich. I mean, you're talking the best of the best. Um, in college basketball, and Marcus Smash joined that crew, and it was supposedly a bad game for him. <laughs> Got some early comments. Happy Hermit says, I-L-L, I-N-I, good sir. Check it check it out, Seven. Thank you for watching. Nervous, not worried. Uh, I don't even know if I was nervous, to be completely honest. Uh, the Happy Hermit, once again, danger time. And our, our bench stepped up. Uh, Yeah, I mean, today was just one of those games where I feel like we've watched this game all season long. Whereas, you know, we were up one, I think, at halftime, and it's the game was closer than it should have been, but it's because Moorhead State was just making three-pointer after three-pointer, seemingly. And I just, I mean, I said it earlier, I've been saying it all season long, you can't try to shoot with Illinois. And in this particular case, I just think Illinois was clearly the better team. Um, I think I put my worry meter at three at halftime. We were starting to get their guys in foul trouble uh, in the second half. And it's 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 just nice because obviously we're going to talk about it in a second. We know what happened in the other matchup with uh, Duquesne beating BYU, which I know a lot of NI, uh, sorry uh, Illinois fans were kind of worried about that second round matchup. And for Duquesne to pull off that upset, I think you mentioned it, you know, a 14 seed and now I think what an 11 seed. Yep. That's the path to the sweet 16. This is what we've been waiting for. You know, we've always been inundated with, you know, one of the tougher paths and, you know, here's Brad's opportunity, Brad's opportunity, the team's opportunity. We just got to take care of business now. I mean, you think of the first half, I, I think Spradlin is a great coach and he was trying to clog the lane as much as he could. And Moorhead State got up to that nine, nothing lead. And I was like, okay, let's let them cool off. It's almost like the uh, drag race where uh, a guy just zooms out in front really, really quickly. But did he have all the gasoline in his car? He ended up not having the gasoline in the car. So um, it was a little bit like, oh no, but just as like a thought, like a tinge, but then it was like, okay, let's just wait on, wait and see what takes place in the rest of this game. And you look at uh, Dre Gibbs LaHorn, two shots, made them both six points. And then Luke Goody, three for four from beyond the three point line for nine points. And then Dane Danger off the bench, nine for nine, 21 points, eight rebounds. That is one of the most dominant big man performances that the Illini have had in modern NCAA times. Like, I think that usurps anything that James Augustine or Roger Powell have done in the NCAA tournament. I mean, this was an unbelievable effort off of the bench. So kudos to him and then kudos to uh, Terrence Shannon Jr. 26 points, 9 for 16 from the field, 3 for 9 from the three-point line, 4 assists. Uh, just that leader, and then he became the all-time leading scorer in a season in Illinois history. So um, the stats just keep rolling in, and this is the kind of things that I use 2016 Cubs references a lot, like where you start seeing like 
most in history or the first time since uh, Tink, Evers, and Chance, those kind of things. That's happening for the Illini this year, and um, I think we have uh, some more games uh, this year in the NCAA tournament, uh, even past this weekend. I, I think with a performance like this, with stars like this, uh, the world is at our fingertips. I hope so. Eric Goldstein says, go Illini. Great win, Eric. Thank you for watching. Yeah, this is one of those. I mean, Terrence Shannon had 19 points in the first half. Dane essentially took over in the second half. As you said, Marcus Domask had a triple-double, and nobody realized it except for the bookkeeper. It's it's one of those where how do you guard that team? You know, like, what do you do against it? I, I don't know. We're playing super confident. It's it's. I, I tweeted about it earlier. I think Terrence Shannon being snubbed and getting the third uh, team All-American and the tweet right afterwards, bet. I think that may have raised the ceiling to what this team is capable of doing. Because while everybody else just kind of did nothing for that first half, Terrence was just like, all right, I got it. No big deal. I'll, I'll take care of it. And he did. 19 points in the first half. This is actually like... We had so many players perform well, but I think you and I are both going to agree on who the player of the game is today, right? Oh, it's uh, Dane Danger. Absolutely. It's got to be Dane Danger. I mean, we need to unleash him on all these teams that are just smaller, like that aren't, that don't have the bigs that the Big Ten teams uh, do. I mean, he was what, nine for nine? Is that what you said? Yeah, nine for nine, eight rebounds, five on the defensive side, three in the offensive. And just super confident. You know, I mean, he was doing crossovers attacking the rim. I don't know if you caught that in the first half. The guys just, what a, what yeah. a great story. You know, and again, I, I hate doing this because I'm not trying to set anybody up. But you alluded to the 2016 Cubs season. You know, you have these just stories that you just can't help rooting for. And Dane Danger, you know, it's a guy a lot of folks, including their coaching staff uh, in particular, were just frustrated with early on in the season and the guy never complained. The guy just, you know, he never, you never had to worry about the, the body language that he displayed whenever his number was called, he'd come in, you know, sure his defense needed to be worked on, but to see it culminate with his performance in the big 10 tournament. And now this round one performance where let's be honest, everyone in the country saw a danger today. If someone uh, someone had tweeted out, I forget who it was, that if you had just started paying attention to Illinois two weeks ago, you'd be shocked that Dane Dane is not in the running for National Player of the Year. Yeah, and you'd be surprised that a guy like Quincy Garrier is starting in front of him. I mean, I, I think you need to keep Dane on the bench. I feel like he is a, uh asset off the bench. I think if you start him, I think the flow is a little bit different. But the ability of him to just snap and get into game mode right away is just incredible. It, it, it's fascinating. I haven't seen a turnaround like this uh, in Illini sports in a very, very long time. And I mean, you look at where you looked at what we were talked about early on in the season about our bench. Like Sonny, you said it many times. You're like, we're going to ha- need that Dane danger game. And we have needed in the big 10 tournament. And I don't know if we necessarily needed it in this game, but he did it. He did it in this NCAA tournament game, and I think we will need it in the future to beat a team like UConn if we get to that point in the Elite Eight where he's going to go up against a massive big that they have, and you're going to need all of the fouls. You're going to need all of the minutes down low that you can possibly get from a guy like him. It's nice because, as you kind of said, you know, Quincy didn't have a great game. I don't know what Ty Rogers was doing on the floor today. Like it seemed like his head was just not into it at all. Just fumbling um, passes right underneath uh, the rim, but being able to, uh, you know, it's uh, dangerous. Like the Hulk size wise compared to just unleash him against the mid major teams. And then you don't need contributions from a uh, Quincy, uh, you know, some of the other guys, obviously Marcus Damask had a great all around game, but scoring his scoring touch just wasn't there. But it didn't need to be there because Moorhead State just had zero answer for Dane. You know, and we, if you knew their scouting report, they didn't have any big guys to begin with. They got that one guy, Miles. But 
I think I said in the preview uh, that I recorded yesterday that this could be a game where Danger goes off for 25 because they had no one to guard him. I mean, if you would have told me that Quincy Garrier is going to have zero points, Ty Rogers is going to have zero points and only three rebounds, and um, Justin Harmon, he was also going to have zero points, that would be an unbelievable story. So congratulations to um, the likes of Dre Gibbs LaHorn and Luke Goody and um, and Dane Danger for all stepping up so much. I mean, what a great performance. Yeah, I mean, I've been rough on uh, Luke Goody uh, at least the last couple of weeks just because I didn't think he was offering much on the floor. And, you know, his minutes um, were dwindling down. So obviously the coaching staff agreed with me. But today... I mean, he was spreading the floor. He made his open shots. And I mentioned, actually, there was a few minutes stretch there, four or five minutes, where uh, they kept trying to switch Minix onto guarding uh, Goody. And while Minix did get the better of it a couple times, Goody did a very admirable job uh, compared to some of his uh, defensive por- performances uh, earlier on in the season. So hats off to Luke. You know, he's a- another guy who's just – Super easy to root for, and you could see his struggles. And you know, there's whispers going on, uh, you know, about whether he was coming back next year. But to have this sort of game, uh, it has to be a confidence booster moving forward. Because again, his three point shooting, if it goes, in, if they're going in, we're going to need it. You know, maybe not next week. Hopefully, although if he wants to continue shooting the way he is, sure. But certainly, if we make it to the round of sixteen and uh, elite eight. Yeah, I mean, this Moorhead State team, Minix with 27 points, Lathan with 23. I mean, those were some good stat lines by Moorhead State that they had. And for Illinois to not let those guys get on, the other guys get too much on a heater was great job by this defense. I think one of the areas that we need to do improve upon is getting the free throw line. We ended up only with uh, 12 free throw attempts throughout the game. So that was a little bit of a problem. And I think that needs to improve in the Sweet 16 and the Elite Eight. But uh, Illinois also didn't foul them too terribly much either because they had only eight free throw attempts. So defensively, Illinois did a really, really good job of keeping them off of the free throw line and keeping our guys clean in terms of foul count. Got a lot of comments to catch up on. Uh, Brock Johnson says, I don't think Terrence is tired. Um, He didn't look tired in that first half. No. I mean, he he should be with the way he's been carrying our team lately, but uh, he played fantastic. Eric Goldstein agrees with us. Luke Goody was huge today. Absolutely. Uh, Eric also uh, says, DGL. Let's talk about him for a second. I mean, he had those two three-pointers, and he let everyone in that stadium know he scored that. He was amped. He was – I think when he came into the game in the first half is kind of when the tide turned in that first half because uh, Moorhead State you know, had taken that early lead. Then we switched um, DGL to – I forget who the guard was – and let uh, Terrence Shannon uh, start guarding uh, – man, now I'm screwing my names up. But DGL's tenacity on defense is very – reminds me of uh, Sincere from last year. And I really am more optimistic now moving forward next year, you know, especially in particular if Sincere and DGL come back, that that's going to be a really tough defense for the opposition to play against. Yeah, I mean, it was five minutes and 21 seconds uh, left in the first half, and Dre gibbs Lahorn made that three to give it – give Illinois a 32-29 lead. And um, at that point, Illinois really uh, stayed true with the lead in the into the end of the first half with a 38-39 lead. So he brought the energy, and I think that kind of elevated the guys around him to be like, hey, let's step it up. Uh, DGL came off the bench and was just the microwave there. Mm-hmm. Love the Terrence Shannon Jr. scramble for the loose ball play. You know the one. Oh, absolutely. That's a, we all saw that. that's a one shi- shining moment play right there. Just, you beat me to it. <laughs> <laughs> you literally beat me to it. That's going. That's a highlight that's going to be played uh, at the end of the national championship uh, game. And, you know, well-deserved. Again, the guy just, he's balling out. You can tell he's just very focused on the job ahead. And he, even if Dane didn't show up in that first uh 
the second half, I don't think Terrence was going to let us lose today. No. Uh, Brad says, can't overlook Duquesne. They beat a really good uh, BYU team. Yeah, and they've got – how do I say this? We need to win this game, though. You know, like Duquesne, you know, they obviously overcame BYU, but BYU played awful that first half. I don't know how much of the game you got to watch, Austin, but they yeah. – looked very lacking of confidence. They're missing open passes, missing open shots. And Duquesne in that second half almost pissed it away, just possession by possession. And luckily they were able to um, pull it out uh, in the end. But I don't think Brad, with everything that's looming over this program, it, I don't think it's possible for us to overlook an opponent, opponent right now, regardless of their seed. And I think Illinois has what BYU doesn't have, and that is a first-team All-American kind of guy, and possibly after the performance we've seen from Marcus Damask, a third-team kind of All-American guy. And that is that is a huge difference between a mid-major winning and losing in a game. And I think that uh, BYU just didn't have that. They rely on the three-point shot a lot, and um, Illinois, they don't have to. They have a guy like Dane Danger. They have a guy that can drive in the lane like a Terrence Shannon. They have Marcus Damask who can play booty ball. So there is all sorts of ways that Illinois can score. It's not just the three-point line. So Duquesne is going to have an issue uh, picking and choosing who they're going to defend at certain points. Um, as long as they're getting some contribution, Illinois is getting some contribution from a Quincy Garrier um, when Terrence Shannon is cold or a, uh, a Dane Danger as well. So, I mean, there are multiple ways that Illinois can beat you, not just one like BYU can. Jackson Johnson checks in and says, congratulations on a fine victory against uh, Moorhead State. Um, to your point, Austin, you're exactly right. Like the difference, I think the ceiling on this team is so high because we can take a team's punch. We can see what the strategy is of the opposition and whether Underwood does it or not, who knows, but we can adjust. Like our teams with Kofi were kind of basically inside out, throw the ball into Kofi, have, surround him by shooters. And then if the sh shots weren't going down, then we were in trouble and we were vulnerable. This year, you know, we, we have, we can play fast breaks. We can run in transition. We can slow it down with, uh, you know, Marcus Damask. We have five guys who can handle the ball. Like all five of our position players routinely every game bring the ball up the floor. It's just a tough matchup for, you know, any team to kind of uh, match up against us. And so, you know, kind of like what you said, it's I'm excited to see us moving forward because the key is we, at least for the first couple of rounds, no matter what, we're going to have the two of the best players uh, on the court. And that's huge come March. Yeah, I mean, I, I, like I said, BYU, great season, but again, they – they lacked some things. They had a great win against Kansas, but there's a reason why they were a six seed um, being in the Big 12 Conference. And Illinois just needs to get some contribution if Illinois were to make it past uh, um, the next round into the Sweet 16. Then you start getting nitpicky of, like, Ty Rogers has to play better. Quincy Guerriere has to play better. Uh, the minutes between DGL and Justin Harmon may need to change, um, as Eric Goldstein mentioned. So I think next week, I think next game, pardon me, we will be fine. I think we're going to win. I think Vegas might have us as like a 12 and a half point favorite by the time this matchup is officially set in the books. Um, but I think Illinois will win this uh, game coming up. I hope so. We better. Um, you know, again, as we talked about at the, as we kicked off this show, this is going to be our best opportunity to make it to the round of 32. And uh, it looks like I lost Austin for a second. No big deal. Let's catch up on comments. Uh, check it out. Seven says, good on the Dukes. We're all rooting for the Dukes today. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. I, I certainly was. I, I started watching that game uh, pretty closely. And, uh, you know, I wanted to kind of scout BYU and uh, how they played. Um, I know like half of Illini Nation was kind of worried uh, about that matchup, especially with their high net ranking. I think they're like number 16 or something like that. But 
now I got to start scouting Duquesne. Uh, maybe I'll get uh, Joe to join me back uh, on the show and give us a scouting report on him. Check it out. It says Goody is a legit three point threat. DGL is no joke. Yeah. And when those two guys are playing well, again, it's just more weapons on this team. And we're, this is a team that already has a lot of weapons. So completely agree. Eric Goldstein says Goody is coming back next year. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, he seems like he seems like a guy who's going to be a four, you know, four year player and, you know, get into coaching, work with the program um, moving forward. I'm just saying, you know, like he wasn't getting many minutes. So there's a there's in today's modern college basketball world, you have to kind of wonder and explore the idea that someone who is used to playing minutes may want to kind of explore whether if they go down a level, um, you know, you can play more minutes and get some more time on the court. That's all I was saying. I've not heard anything. Uh, don't get me wrong if I phrase that incorrectly before. I'm just trying to – I recognize the college basketball world nowadays, and, um, you know, these are things that are always just kind of in the back of your mind. Check it out. It says, other teams would set picks for Goody. Uh, yeah, I I think with Brad, Brad's just very stingy. And, you know, defense is just huge to Brad. And uh, Goody, it's not to his fault. It's not, it's just, he's not athletic enough. Um, he's got decent size and he puts his hands up. But once you switch on to him, the guy with the ball can pretty much do whatever he wants. So I think that's uh, kind of what Luke's uh, issues are. Brad says, do you start playing DGL over Harmon? Harmon hasn't been doing much lately. Um, I get the idea that, you know, you want his veteran presence around. And I th- I want to put proper value into that because I think one of the team reasons last year's team didn't play up to its potential is because there were so many young guys uh, that were constantly playing and they just get kind of overwhelmed. I don't know how much Harmon's contributions are showing up in the box score but at the very least I think he's it's kind of more of a mental thing a locker room yeah presence there and uh you know at least he's hustling right now that's all I can ask for check it out says DGL brings energy yeah him and Terrence and Coleman I mean those guys you know we need it like we missed that you know last year was Sincere Harris Sincere Harris was the guy slapping the floor um, you know, getting the crowd amped up. And this year, right now, it's DGL doing it. And, uh, you know, another story that Austin and I were talking about before, that uh, it's just nice to see them kind of get their moment um, when it really, really matters. Eric says, Harmon is so lost. Yeah, I, I'm i not sure, you know, I can't say anything beyond that. I mean, he's playing a role on this team and it's not necessarily showing up in the box score, but the fact that he's on the floor, that tells me that Brad does see that he's providing some sort of value uh, when he uh, is in. Uh, Eric, once again says, Brad will never play DGL over Harmon. He's just won't for some reason. I think it's, it's a trust factor. That's all. I mean, I'm, I'm satisfied. DGL got his, uh, what do you say? Like six, seven minutes or whatever today, you know, he played well on defense. He hit those two big threes in the first half when nobody but uh, Shannon was scoring. Um, I'm happy with the minutes that DGL got today. Uh, Check it out. It says, I don't think the Dukes were rooting for the Eagles today. (laughs) No, I don't think so. Harold Hartman, thank you for uh, checking in. So many weapons Illinois has. Yeah, and that's what makes us so dangerous. You know, uh, obviously we have our weaknesses, uh, in particular with, you know, our – defense as a whole and you know brad has a reputation with uh his adjustments um when something's not working mid-game but man we're tough to guard and again you know i keep saying this and i apologize if uh your ears are bleeding at this point but you can't out illinois illinois you're not gonna win purdue won our game uh that second meeting because they stopped the ability for Tan Chan Jr. to get easy transition points. You need to stop that. That's why when Moorhead State was making all their baskets in that first half, I wasn't really worried. It's like, okay, I mean, you're just playing at our pace. 40-39 is an Illinois pace. We ended the game, ended up the game with uh, 85. They ended up uh, with, uh, what, 69, 30 points in the second half. 
there's only a handful of teams that can score and keep up uh, with us on offense. Check it out. Says uh, Brad likes Harmon's age over DGL. I definitely think that that's very true. I, I think there's a veteran presence about it. The Illini D was surprisingly strong today. Yeah, but it's also a factor of playing Morehead State. You know, and don't get me wrong, I I can see why they played so well and dominated the Ohio Valley Conference. They're a very good scientific team. I think that's the word. They're very calculated, um, efficient on offense. And I can see how they did so well during their regular season. But it's just hard going up against Illinois with, with a team full of athletes who can shoot. And let's be honest, a man who single-handedly is just not going to uh, let us lose. But uh, all right, we have uh, 51 people watching right now. Thank you all so much for watching. If this is a, your first time uh, watching, hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Um, a lot of you are watching us every episode but not subscribed which is fine thank you but until we get some more subscribers uh we really don't show up on uh, youtube's algorithm for other illini fans and that's what we're just trying to get uh, exposed to right now so if you don't mind let's all have a light like spike uh let's hit that like button real quick uh before we um kind of move on the next game is going to be against uh duquesne uh, I, I know very little about him outside what we watched today in that game against BYU, but uh, I'll do some research tonight. I'll probably try to see if I can knock out uh, a preview episode tomorrow and um, be ready for Saturday. I don't know if there's going to be a post game on Saturday. Full disclosure, um, my in-laws are in town, so that means I'll have someone home to be watching my kids, which means I might be going out in the suburbs somewhere of Chicago uh, to watch uh, the game on Saturday. So if any of you guys are around Hit me up on Twitter at IlliniCast or uh, leave in the comments um, where you're going to be. I'd love to get a little IlliniCast uh, group together to watch the game. But that's going to be it for now. Uh, there's going to be a bunch of other post-game coverage you guys can check out. Thank you all so much for watching. And again, please hit that subscribe button, like button on your way out. I've left my kids upstairs uh, alone for a little too long and I don't want to jinx it. So I'm going to go check on them. Uh, for now, ILL, I'll see you guys hopefully